Hello everyone and welcome to the Harry Edwards Healing Minute wherever you are, whatever time of the day whether it is live or on recorded catch-up welcome and thank you for joining us My name is Bev I'm sitting in for Doreen this morning who still isn't quite feeling up to par for the Healing Minute so let's send her some healing thoughts today as well the music you're listening to, to at the moment is um, Medwin Goodall and it's called Forest Spirits. So, make yourself comfortable, relax and if you wish close your eyes. Be aware of your breath in with the new and out with the old. Focus your attention on your breathing. Breathe slowly and deeply. Clear your mind of any cares and worries, unwanted thoughts and allow them to fade away. Allow your body to release and let go of any negative thoughts and tension. Allow your mind to become still and quiet. You are centred and calm. Imagine yourself anchoring to Mother Earth through the soles of your feet, like the roots of a tree, reaching a pink pool of love and light. Feel yourself becoming still and centred and the relaxation beginning to wash over the whole of your body. In your toes, your feet, your ankles and legs. Washing over your knees and thighs. Feel that wave of relaxation continue to move up your body, into your back and rising up your spine, into all the muscles of your abdomen and chest, becoming loose and relaxed, free of any tightness. Allow the relaxation to spread into your shoulders, your arms, all the way to your hands and fingertips, then up to your neck and face. Allow your head to rest comfortably. Feel the jaw muscles relax with all the tiny muscles in and around your eyes. Feel a softness over your face. Now from the top of your head down to your toes, see your whole body and surrounding energy fields bathed in a pure, healing, white, protective light. Imagine you are going for out for an early morning walk. The sun is about to rise and you see the glow of the sun as it slowly rises in the morning sky. You are on a country footpath where you become aware of six eyes fixated on you. You stop a while and say good morning to the three foxes looking at you before they disappear into the nearby foliage. Continue your walk then find yourself in an avenue of trees. They are sycamore trees and they're near the bank of a river. You find a wooden bench that overlooks the river. Sit a while on this bench, observing the light of the sun, reflecting on the moving currents of the water. You also notice a mist swirling upwards from the surface, as you see several magnificent swans majestically and silently move through the water. Then be aware of a heron, on the opposite bank, near a willow tree whose long tendril branches overhang and nearly dip into the river. As you continue to look across the water, you are now aware of a blue and orange colour darting about so fast, it's a kingfisher. Whilst you sit on the bench, feel rested and relaxed. Enjoy the ambience surrounding you and feel the energy of the trees and the song of the birds nesting in the branches, bringing you peace to the whole of your being. <clears throat> we give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies, and wherever you are right now. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. 
As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Nature. The Sanctuary Prayer Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power the disharmonies within me may be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me, and with a divine healing purpose for those who are sick, or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit, that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. The Great Invocation From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let life, love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. A little poem called Angel Blessings. May you be showered with angel blessings today. May the angels bring you peace, happiness, hope and divine comfort. May you be healed of whatever causes you pain. May your whole life be filled with divine love and angelic light. And may the angels of comfort and healing wrap you safely in their arms. We now ask that all the people whose names we hold in a distant healing folder, and perhaps in your own healing thoughts and written words, receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. Also, Send healing for the animals of the world, and especially to our animal friends who are part of our family. And let's also send our thoughts out to all the people around the world who are suffering from war and conflict. Now for a minute of silence while these healing energies are sent out to the world. May all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Our thanks and blessings for your help today in sending out the wonderful healing energies and to all the angelic realms and our friends in spirit joining us today. Thank you. 
please continue to contact us in the normal way. Visit our website or Facebook page for details. We are still a phone call away if you need to talk with someone. You can email the sanctuary or write a letter and we can still send you distant healing. We offer our healing on telephone, Skype or Zoom. But the good news is the sanctuary is now open for healing but while there are still Covid restrictions it's by appointment only. But you are welcome to visit the grounds and the woodland and view the beautiful scenery and take in the healing ambience from the woodland. So a couple of notices. This evening the 23rd of May at 7.30pm please join us for a guided meditation both on Facebook and on Zoom with Linda Demir who has given us her meditation from a home in California. So my story today is from the Chicken Soup for the Soul series and it's Think Positive, 101 Inspirational Stories About Counting Your Blessings and Having a Positive Attitude and it's called Finding the Real Me. It started out as one of the best days of my life and certainly of my career. My staff and I had been named the number one unit in our company and I was taking them out for a celebratory lunch. I worked with a wonderful group of people who, we were, very, who were very proud of what our hard work and team spirit had accomplished during the prior year. Lunch was fun, the food excellent and the camaraderie at the table made me smile. I was proud of this group who laughed, cried and loved each other. I felt blessed to be their leader. The weather was crisp, cool and sunny and I thought to myself it just doesn't get any better than this. It was a perfect day. After lunch we returned to work. As I checked my email an urgent message popped up from a mandatory tele for a mandatory teleconference later that afternoon. We had these types of teleconferences quite a bit to cut costs versus expensive management meetings so I thought nothing of it and continued to catch up on work and phone calls I had missed during lunch. Two o'clock came. Time for the teleconference. I put my phone on speaker so I could work and listen at the same time, multitasking as usual. I heard our associate director's voice, usually so friendly and upbeat, take on a sombre tone. He stuttered and stumbled, which was not like him and finally gave us the bad news. You are all being relocated to, to Ohio if you are willing to leave and move. He told us with a tremble in his voice, and if you cannot move, you will be given a severance package and 60 days notice. I felt numb. How could this be happening? Most of us had been at the company for years and had been told our jobs were some of the most secure in the organisation. None of us, for various reasons, would be able to relocate and there were no other jobs available within the company in our area. So it appeared my team and I would soon be out of work. I had the heartbreaking task of sharing the news with my staff. As their leader, I had to be strong and upbeat and courageous but inside I was scared to death. While I gave them words of encouragement, I felt my world was slowly coming to an end. My husband and family consoled me, but I was scared, really scared. Financially, I knew we would be okay. My husband had a good job and the severance and the savings I, I had would keep us going for quite a while. But I had worked full time my whole life and did not know if I could deal with losing my job. It had become my identity, who I was and how I defined myself. I was a leader and felt a good one. What would I be with that, with that taken from me? The first few days after my job ended, I didn't get out of bed. I kept up a brave front for my children and husband, but moped around the house not really knowing what to do. 
After working non-stop for 25 years, I was lost. I sent out resumes, but due to the economic conditions, job postings in my field were few and far between. It looked like I would be out of work for quite a while, and I didn't know what to do with all my new found extra time. One day, after sitting around feel sorry for myself, I turned on the television and watched a programme about a missions group that helped children and hungry people all over the world. I felt guilty knowing that even though I had lost my job, we had plenty of food, healthy food, a good life on, and, and, and take that good food on the table every night. The words spoken by the missionary seemed directed specifically at me. She told viewers that the best way to be blessed and to forget about your own problems is to help someone else. Ashamed, I realised that I had been wallowing in self-pity when I had so much to be thankful for, a loving ha husband, beautiful children and a family and friends who needed me. I could either co continue to focus on what I had lost and be miserable, or I could count my blessings and bless others. I decided to get up, get dressed and cook a great meal for my family that night. I had always loved to cook, learning at the side of my mum and grandmothers, all wonderful southern, southern cooks who taught me their secrets. I also thought I could make some extra food to take to our neighbours who were retired and brighten their day as well. I began to assemble the ingredients for my dinner, humming to myself a, a little as I prepared our meal. I was starting to feel like my old self again. Just then, one of my daughters walked into the kitchen and asked if she could help me cook dinner. As we stirred and sifted, basted and baked, our dinner came together. We laughed and shared stories. I told her my mum and grandmothers had let me help them cook when I was a little girl and I still used many of their recipes. I forgot about how depressed I had been and when we put the meal on the table for the rest of the family we were both proud of the delicious dinner we had made and basked in the compliments we received. After dinner, as I cleaned up the dishes, it occurred to me that I had never taught my children to cook. I had been so busy being a career woman that I had not taken the time to show them how to make the wonderful dishes I had learned as a child and a young woman. I had always cooked for my family but had not given them the gift that, that, that I had been given, the gift of learning how to prepare a meal for my loved ones. I was saddened by this and decided that I was going to use my unexpected free time to change all of that. The next morning, I announced to my family that I was going to start a cooking school for them. This was met by groans from my kids, who all had busy lives and plans of their own. But I convinced them to give it a try, and we decided we would prepare supper the next night. I let each child pick a dish to prepare for the meal, with my guidance. We decided to do this weekly and make extra food to share with the friends or neighbours in need in our community. The next morning we shopped for our dinner at our grocery store and local farmers market. We unloaded our ingredients, put on our aprons and started cooking. I shared cooking techniques, shortcuts and the background behind many of the recipes we had decided to prepare. While making my grandmother's famous lemon meringue pie, I remembered the many times I had stood in her kitchen, licking the beaters thick with white fluffy meringue, sweet and cloud-like, and how much fun those times had been. Now I was sharing them with my own children. I could al almost see grandmother smiling down from heaven, watching my children and I carrying out her traditions. Nothing had made her happier than cooking something wonderful for her family, and now I knew how she felt. Instead of rushing to put, put something quick on the table between business meetings and reports, I got to take the time to enjoy cooking and eating the beautiful meal we were creating. Plus, I got to share the company of my children, listen to them joke, find out what was going on with each of them, 
and to appreciate the personalities of each one. All four of them were so different, yet so special, and brought so much joy into my life. I had just been too busy to notice that before. I had been so busy providing for my family financially and basing my worth on my career that I had forgotten what was really worthwhile and who I, I really was, a wife, a mother to these amazing people who deserved my time, my guidance and affection. Cooking school continued each week. It became a time we all look forward to, a time of laughter, love and learning. And of course, some really great meals. Cooking with my kids was just the start. I began doing things for them and for them that they enjoyed. Going to the library, movies, playing tennis or lounging by the pool. For the first time, I was able to really focus on and enjoy my family. Without deadlines looming in the background, working on my laptop or checking my email at the same time. Instead of multitasking, I focused on the one task that mattered most, making sure my family knew they were loved and were number one in my life. I did eventually go back to work, but I found a job that was flexible and allowed me to spend much more time with my husband and children. It turned out to be an even better job than my previous one. It paid better, was less stressful and gave me the flexibility I needed to be there with my family when they needed me. My priorities had changed and I never again wanted to put my loved ones in second place to my career. I had thought losing my job was the worst thing that had ever happened to me, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. While I had thought that losing my job was the end of who I was, it was really only the beginning of discovering the real me. And that story was written by Melanie Adams Hardy. So thank you for your help with the Healing Minute today and listening to this positive story. So bye for now, love light and blessings to you all and take care. I'm finishing today with a little bit of music by Andrei Krylov and it's called Music of the Sea. So bye for now and join us for another Healing Minute with Tracy tomorrow morning. Bye bye.